So first and foremost, I want to thank everyone uh, for being here today. Um, this is a big day, a special day for our program, uh, for the University of Pittsburgh, for the city, and especially for Bob. And uh, I'll let him take it from here, then I'll talk, then we'll open up for questions. Uh, first off, I'd like to thank everybody for coming out on such short notice. Thank you for uh, gathering this on such little uh, preparation. I'd like to start by saying a special thanks, special shout out to Coach Brown and Coach Cape for believing in me when nobody else really did. They've been on me since the 10th grade, always kind of instilling confidence in me and just telling me what I can be and just helping towards my overall development as a basketball player on and off the court. I'd like to thank the rest of the coaches, Coach Gill, Coach Kyle, I can't be here, Coach JC, Coach T.O. Thank you for making this year memorable. And like I said, just helping me become the best basketball player that I can be. I'd like to thank um, Heather Like, my AD, always being that smile, always being supportive, always uh, just being that kind of ray of sunshine, just bringing a lot of energy, positivity to this program. I'd like to thank uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Mike, oh, I can't really see him, but uh, my academic advisor, always on me, always telling me to go to class, you know, making sure that I'm a, not just an athlete, but a student athlete. I'd like to thank Jack, DA, Coach Vince, Always um, making sure my body's right, keeping me 100%. Um, I would like to thank the zoo, the fan base, this amazing fan base, unbelievable atmosphere. Uh, I would like to thank the 412 Collective for taking care of me this year uh, and my rest of my teammates. Uh, I would like to thank the managers, their hard work, everything that they did for us. Definitely made my life easier, definitely made the team's life easier. And uh, lastly, I'd like to thank my family, ultimate supporters, my number one fans. I feel like they always were here for me. They made every single game, at least one person in my family did. And they were just always in my corner. They all, I wouldn't be here without them. And I always make sure I want to give back, make sure people know that, that like I'm very family oriented and I appreciate them and everything they did for me. Lastly, none of this would ever be done without God. I'd like to give all glory to God. Thank you for continuing to bless me, my family, and this program. And. Uh, with that being said, I would like to announce my decisions for next year. As next year, I will be concluding my career here at Pitt and declaring for the 2024 NBA draft. I would like to open the floor. Coach. So, yep. <laughs> so, uh, this is exciting for me. It's, it's exciting and it's bittersweet. Um, you know, like Bub said, we started recruiting him when he was in 10th grade. I remember the first time I saw him, it was in Atlantic City. I remember uh, Coach Brown coming to me uh, maybe a few weeks before and was like, yo, like, Bub's son, I, you know, I think he's really good. Like, you should, we should, you should look at, you should go see him. And I went to Atlantic City and I saw him on one of those courts. And I text his dad, Bob, Big Bob, that's, this is Little Bob. Um, and I text his dad and just said, you know, who I've known for a really long time. And I knew this guy when he was younger. Um, he didn't know me, but I knew him. I knew his brother, Kareem. And I just said to Bob, I was like, yo, man, like, he's, he's got it. Like, I want to offer him. And it was very rare. He said, right then, he told me, all right, he's yours. I didn't say anything to you about him. I never mentioned it. I wanted this to be organic, but you don't have to worry about anything. You got him. And that started this unbelievable relationship. Um, I didn't think, I don't think he thought, I don't think his family thought that this would just be a one year thing with him playing for us. But when he got here in the summer, and he started, when we started working and we started doing stuff, you know, I, I, I noticed that he was, I noticed that he was different. I, I knew he was a really good player when we recruited him and I've never been one to pay attention to rankings. But when we started working, I started to see that like he was different. And one of the things that makes him really different, I think, I think it's the best part of his game is his mind. I think he's really, really smart. Um, and just the, the competitiveness and the work ethic. And obviously when we started the season after the first few games, it was okay, this, 
this could be quicker than you know than any of us even thought. And uh, I remember after the fourth game, sitting with his parents and talking to them about how do we want to handle this because I knew from my past experiences everything was going to change and this thing would be pretty fast or had a chance to be pretty fast. And uh, once the season was over with, um, I spoke to his dad again. We put together a plan and I started reaching out to NBA teams, general managers, scouts, director of personnel, just trying to get them accurate information and feedback. And the feedback that we got was very, very positive. And I thought that went into uh, Lil Bub and his family's decision uh, to make this move. I think it's the right move. Again, we're incredibly excited about it um, and excited about his future. I think he has a really, really bright future. I know he will continue to work. Um, I know he'll continue to be competitive. I know he'll continue to be humble. And this will always be home for him. Um, and I'm just, I'm on a personal level, I'm just really proud of him. I'm really proud of how he's handled everything this year. We threw a lot on his plate. Uh, he showed that he could handle it. And um, I'm really looking forward to watching the player that he becomes. So any questions you have for him or me? Bob, uh, what can you what can you say about the effort that your team put in to help you grow this year? Guys like Blake Henson and and you know guys who've been here, but also guys like Jalen who came with you as a freshman. I say their help in my journey has been detrimental. I feel like they've it's irreplaceable. You feel like those guys taught me a lot. I feel like we helped, we meshed well, and I just feel like those without those guys, I I don't feel like I'm the player that I am today, honestly. And uh, it's forever much love, much thanks to all those guys, all my teammates. And um, I really appreciate them in that season. Jeff, what about Bub's game translates to the next level in this day and age? I think the main thing uh, that makes him really attractive uh, right now and for the future, positional size. Um, when we were walking in here today, I, I think he's grown since the season's been over. So, you know, positional size, feel for the game. Um, his ability to score and facilitate. Uh, he'll continue to get stronger. I actually think he's going to grow again. Um, but his feel for the game and his mind, that's the thing. And then the fact that he's just 18, he won't turn 19 until uh, the middle of almost the end of July. I think all of those things are the things that make him really attractive. He's shown that he's uh, competitive defensively. He's got to stop fouling so much, uh, which he got better towards the end of the year. Um, learning how to harness that competitiveness and not let it get the best of him. Uh, but I think just, you know, what he showed this year and the upside. And the thing I know is that I know he's going to work. That's the thing. And that's one of the things. You don't know any of this stuff until you're with a guy all the time. You know, all of them say they want to work and they want to be really good and things like that. But are you really – going to put in the time and he's shown that he will do that and that's something that I think will go to an even different level now. Bob Jeff said that you know they didn't think this was going to be a one-year thing for you so when over the last you know handful of months did you realize that this could be possible for you what went into that decision and how have you personally seen your game grow to get to this point? I feel like I feel like I always had that mindset that I wanted to get to the next level, not really putting a time limit on it. Like, I never really had the goal or dream to be like a one and done or, you know, whatever it is. But I always knew I wanted to get to the next level, no matter what I had to do to get there. And seeing the, the position that the coaches put me in, the position that this team put me in, that's when I realized I have a chance to do this a lot faster than most people. And so during the middle and end of the season, it was really just, what do, I, what do I have to do to take advantage of the opportunity that I'm given to make this happen? And I feel like towards the middle and end of the season, that's when I realized I could. And uh, yeah. But when you kind of came to this decision and, and knew that it would be final, what were the emotions like? Was it more nerves, excitement? What, what was it like when you finally made that decision? Uh, I'd be lying if I said it wasn't nerves. You know, I feel like that's natural. But um, it's definitely a lot of excitement because it's something that you look at, something that you watch, something that you dream for. And it's like the fact that you can, you're like one step away, that's really where the excitement is because like I can go do that. 
But when, when did you actually come to this conclusion? You were, said you were thinking about it in mid-season, late season, but when did you say, I'm done? Um, like three days ago, maybe. <laughs> like, <laughs> no, nah, I wasn't. But some time ago, uh, towards the end of the season, it was, it was just like, if I'm being told by people that I can, I would like to, you know, see for myself, basically. You had assessments from the NBA? Uh, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we got them. Yeah. <laughs> Bob, under the current CBA within the NBA, a player who enters the draft process can withdraw any time 10 days before the draft. Is that kind of thing potentially on the table, or will you kind of feel that process out? And what are your thoughts on that as you sit here today? Uh, my intentions is to be a pro basketball player um, in two, three months. So that's that's my plan, and that's what I'm going to try to do. Jeff, how do you weigh this for the program? Obviously, you'd love to have him back for another year, but to, to have him come and be able to have the skills to then go into the first round. Yeah, I, I think it's great for our program. I mean, obviously, we would love to have him back. Um, but when you have an opportunity like this, man, all of these kids dream of being a pro. When I was his age, I dreamed of being a pro. And when you have an opportunity to do it, and it's it's the right opportunity right now, you have to take advantage of it. Um, and throughout the season, you know, we – we had more pro scouts at our practices this year than we've had in my first five years combined. So that's when I knew, okay, this has a chance to be, this is real. And not just for him, for other guys on the team. Um, and, uh, you know, the way I look at it, I'm in the business, we as coaches are in the business of trying to help kids fulfill their dream, how to help them reach their dream. All of these guys have goals. They have things that they want to accomplish. And everyone's race is different. And it's, it's our job, I feel, to teach them how to accomplish that. And one of the main things is work. Now, you have to have talent. Being put in the right positions can help. But if you work and all of those other things are right, then you have a chance for something like this to happen. Like we said, I didn't, when we recruited him, I, didn't, I, I thought he would be a pro. I wasn't, I didn't, honestly, I didn't think it would be one year. But that was until I got to know him. And you start watching the work. And, you know, when we, I remember one time, I think it was early October, we were walking back to the film room from the court. And he, he's normally like right around me when we're walking back there. And I said, yo, come stand beside me. And he stood beside me. I was like, you've grown. Like he's, you know, he's, he, he had grown since the summer. Um, and then when you just saw it. And so for me, I look at it, it's a great thing for our program. Um, certainly, you know, we would be better if he were coming back, but I think we'll be good anyway with the guys that we will have coming back, with the guys that we'll add. Um, I think him being able to do this, you know, hopefully will show other recruits that this is possible here at the University of Pittsburgh. Bob, kind of piggybacking off of that, when you look at your teammates and the way Jeff runs things here and your success, the team's success, and especially the second half of the season, um, what's your outlook for this program and how do you think you're leaving it? Um, I would say I'm just it's a great culture here. I feel like it's just a great opportunity to come to get honest feedback, to get better, like have coaches that actually have interest in you getting better and coaches that believe in you, you know, Coach, he'll preach to us all the time in practice. He's living and dying by any shot that we take, living and dying by any defensive effort that we uh, put forth. So it's like if you want a coach that's really just going to believe in you, you want a culture that's always welcoming you, I feel like this is the perfect spot for you. Like, why go anywhere else? Jeff, what would it, what would it mean for Bub to be, you know, a first-round pick or a lottery pick for this program at this this program hasn't had a guy come out of the program and be a draft pick since Lamar Patterson and a lottery pick since Steven Adams. What would that mean just for the legacy here at Pitt? I think it would mean a lot. I mean, like I said, every, every kid that plays this sport, they want to be a pro. Like, that's, that, that's what they want. That's their dream. And uh, to be able to have someone do that from your program um, is something that is a huge accomplishment 
something that you can talk about in recruiting, something that people see, kids see, like this is a path, I can do it from here. You know, uh, this is a great opportunity. Like he talked about the culture that we've been able to create. It started last year with those guys last year, with the returning guys, help, you know, continue the culture this year that we had, which was unbelievable. Um, and the guys that we'll have coming back, they'll help, you know, to continue that. Uh, but certainly when you have a guy that can go, we've, we've, we've had two guys, you know, since I've been here uh, with, with Mogi and Justin that have, you know, that are in the NBA or, you know, spent time in the NBA. I think Blake will be a guy that will be in that league next year. But to have a guy that's, that's drafted and I think he'll be a high draft pick. I think I know it will be first round. Um, it's, it's something that is a huge thing for our program. Bob, you're a coach's kid, and it's, it's clear your family gave you your first love of the game. How much does this mean to you that you've put in the work to be able to do this for a game obviously your whole family loves? Yeah, it means a lot, especially it means a lot because they kind of get to see the fruits of my, my labor, but their labor as well. You know, because like I said, I didn't do this myself. I had my dad, my brothers, my mom, you know, every step of the way. And to see that they work so hard to help me achieve my goals and for me to go out there and have a chance to do it, it's like I'm not only doing it for me, but I'm doing it for them. Let them know that, like, everything they did wasn't in vain, you know. And I, that's, feel like that's a great feeling, especially. It's a great feeling just to see the smiles on, I can put on their faces. Jeff, how does this um, change and adjust your off-season plans now that you have another scholarship spot to fill? Well, we got to get a guard. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, it doesn't change. I mean, we're, we're still, you know, actively recruiting. You know, we know what we need. One of the great things about this, you know, with, 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 with Bub and his family, making this decision and, and, and doing it now, you know, it helps us. It actually helps us because now we know that we do need another guard you know, prior uh, to this. And I found out about it Saturday. So I think that's when the decision, the family made the decision. I spoke to his dad on Saturday um, and knew then. Certainly we haven't told anyone. We haven't really started recruiting a guard because I want him to have his moment. I wanted this moment to be very, very special for he and his family. Uh, but it just, you know, we'll, we'll pursue a guard, hopefully. You know, we have some really good guards returning that we're really excited about, but, you know, we'll need to add her, I'm sorry, we'll need to add another good guard and hopefully they'll see the way he was able to play. And, you know, we know we won't get anyone like him, but we'll get someone really good that'll be able to come in and, you know, blend in with the guys that we have returning um, and someone that'll be good for us. Bob, what type of feedback have you received from scouts, whether that's positive or negative, things that they like, things that they want you to work on throughout this spring process? I would say something that the feedback I've got positive would be kind of piggyback off what Coach said earlier about, um, sorry, scouts are liking like my mind or whatever, like feel for the game, my ability to score in the mid range in three. And something they want me to work on is kind of just getting to the basket more, using my size, not playing like I'm 6'5", or I think I'm 6'4", but playing like I'm 6'5", basically. <laughs> so, yeah. Bob, it's your first time away from home this year. What did you learn off the court from your teammates that you think is going to help you going forward? Off the court for my teammates. Them guys. <laughs> uh, I've learned that um, it pays to have a it pays to have a connection with your teammates. I feel like the fact that we were so close and the fact that we got even closer during the season helped us during the season. Like I feel like if we weren't so so bonded, so connected, like I feel like we wouldn't have the success that we did. So one thing that they taught me was. If you're going to fight with these guys, you're going to battle with these guys, be with them, like them, you know, actually like your teammates. And we did. And I feel like that's what kind of contributed to the fact that we were able to win 22, 23 games this year. 22. Yeah. What's your top moment, whether it's yourself with this team or just the team overall? What was the, the highest high that you feel like you had with this program this past year? Highest high? I would say it's got to be beating Duke at Duke. I feel like 
coming off like a we had a tough stretch, weren't really winning no games. Um, I feel like beating Duke at Duke for only our second game in ACC, and it started like a streak. I feel like that's definitely one of the highest highs, something I, I would definitely never forget. Okay, appreciate it. Appreciate you guys.